pussy, nigga. Oh, nine and next to see, nigga. Fuck with me, dog. Pull up on the scene of some luxury, dog. That's me and my Kobe, yeah. 24, my clothes is real. Iceberg, fuck the diamond, yeah. And that lake shit, like Xavier, yeah. This that Juan Carlos and Javier. Raw coat, trade off the boat. I'm a fly nigga, took a wing off. Married to the game, took my ring off. That's me, we can have a bling off. Throw the auto tune on, have a sing off. If the pussy ain't mine, and I speed off. It's I don't even fuck with hoes, rather beat off. No lotion, tips got the potion. Fuck the commotion, I'm out in the ocean. A nigga in motion, all this devotion. Got a nigga up in his bitch like he floating. Go grill shining, check out my limb, on roll with the It's Monday, so that means three things. One, I'm not your MCM. Two, it's a Mamba Monday. And three, it's time for the A24 podcast. How are you guys doing? I'm your host, the product of Poverty's Environment, the Pope Chuck Paul. We got a lot of talk about this week. Well, a lot of talk about that's transpired this past week. First off, I want to send a rest in peace. My condolences to the family and friends of legendary digital underground rapper, Shock G. You may know him as Humpty Hump. Yes, it was the same person, if you did not know. Also, the late great Dark Man X DMX, DMX the Great, was laid to rest yesterday. He had his homegoing services um, at the Barclays Center, which was live streamed on his YouTube page and the funeral was aired on BET. Now, I didn't get to watch the funeral on BET, but I did watch, the, for the most part, the homegoing services that was on his YouTube page on Saturday. Um, but he had his casket on a gigantic, I can't even say pickup truck or like those big, on a, on a huge monster truck, right? His red casket. I believe it, it, it drove to New York City from Yonkers all the way down to the Barclays Center. You had nothing but motorcycles, Rough Riders following it, showing, showing their respects. Um, Kanye West, his, um, his choir, he did the stage set for um, the homegoing services. His children spoke. His one daughter remixed the um, Slipping song. Drag on almost had me in tears. Um, Styles and Jada spoke, of course Swizz, Eve um, ha- had some words. And the thing that was crazy, because like, all you hear about is DMX. He brought the locks in. He brought drag on. Like, he put the stamp on a lot of these dudes. You know what I'm saying? And like, 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 like Drag said, like, he wouldn't be shit without him. But when, I'm, when I say that, I mean like, we would have never heard of the locks, maybe, or drag on for what's for X. But it was dope. May he rest in peace, watch over us, and his legacy continue to live on. New York City motherfucking legend. Straight up and down. And we did get somewhat of some good news. Derek Chauvin was found guilty on all three charges which is great, it's amazing. He will definitely be doing about 20 years in prison. Some people are gonna say, hey, that's not enough, that's not justice, this, that, and the fourth. But at the same time, it's better than fucking nothing. It's better than him walking out, being able to be a cop again, and do what he did to George Floyd, to somebody else, because he did it before. I think in 2014 to a then 16 year old, or 14 year old, I'm not sure, but he's done it before. And if he was penalized, jailed, or whatever back then, Floyd would probably be alive today. So we gotta look at that, you know what I'm saying? And I'm tired of people calling it accountability, because accountability is when you own up to something. He ain't plead guilty. He didn't apologize when that shit happened. He had that same smug, I don't give a fuck face. Even when he took his last mugshot. 
he wasn't held accountable. It's not like they did something they weren't supposed to do. You're supposed to arrest him. Like, come on, man. And it's funny, well, not funny, but it's crazy. You see like, a lot of these headlines from different countries who are actually following this case. And the headlines say, man, cop who murders man on camera found guilty. Like they're poking fun at the justice system. Like, yeah, you've seen it on camera. Like, the trial shouldn't have been that long. But they wanted to give him a fair trial so nobody can say, oh, he wasn't given one. Because we all know he was guilty of shit. He will be sentenced in eight weeks. So that means he will be sitting in jail for two months. Think about what the fuck he did. So, fuck you, Derek Chauvin. Eat a dick. The other three piece of shit officers, their trials will begin shortly. We'll see how that goes. I hope they lock their dumb asses up too. And as that verdict was read, a young girl, this shit is fucking crazy, by the name of Micaiah Bryant, I hope I'm pronouncing the name wrong, Columbus, Ohio, was shot and killed by a police officer. Shot four times to be exact. Now, there's a video out there of the, of, the, of the incident. She was the one who called the police because two grown women were trying to attack her. In the video, she has a knife. But the thing is, when she calls, she says they have a knife and they're trying to stab me. So I'm thinking in my head, like, did she take the knife from them? Try to defend herself? Because she's 16, these two grown women. You see a man in the video knocking over on um, one of the women. So I'm guessing he came to her aid or whatever. But she had the knife. She called the police officer. The police officer comes. So I don't have his name right in front of me. But um, the police officer comes. And he tells everybody out the way, shoots four times, kills her. Now, my thing is this. I believe he was close enough to taser her or to run down on her, knock her down, shoot in the air, warning shot, hit her once in the leg or something. You shoot four times, to me that's like you're shooting to kill. I don't understand how officers aren't trained to disarm people. To not use deadly force when it's not needed because there are examples of officers who are shot at, stabbed even, gone to fights and brought in their suspect without killing them. That's the crazy thing to me. I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I do want to get this officer's name. And it's just crazy to me. And you got some folks, some dudes even, which is disgusting to me saying, oh, she deserved it. Is that in the forest? They tried to stab her. I'm like, yo, but do you know this whole story? She's the one that called them. It's like when you call the police now, you gotta tell them like, look, when you come here, do not shoot me. Do not shoot anyone. I just need your help to, to defuse the situation. It's like you need to tell them that. Ooh, do I have his name? Do I have his name? Sorry about that, I'm trying to find the dude's name. But yeah, in the meantime, I'm going to give you a few examples of criminals who are white, who are actual, actually deadlier than Micaiah Bryant. And who actually posed a threat to these officers, who actually shot at them. For example, 
Adam Zab Zaborowski was accused of attempting to kill at least seven police officers with an AK-47 on July 27th of last year because he is just not handling the pandemic well, his lawyer said. This is, this, this is in Pennsylvania, Bethlehem Township to be exact. He was brought in alive, unharmed. Also last year, 20-year-old James Hobbs was locked up after exchanging gunfire with two Spalding County deputies in Georgia. Right. He shot once at them, once they pulled up to, um, to the front yard, and as they got out, he shot, shot at them again. He injured one of them. He hid in the woods, they found him, brought him in alive. Now, how are they able to bring in grown men alive after shooting at them, but they don't have the restraint to not kill someone who's unarmed, who, who faces less of a threat? I watched the video of Micaiah Bryant and I seen how close the cop was. He was a good seven, eight feet away. I said, yo, he could have shot in the air. Cause think about it. What if those four shots didn't hit her and just hit random people? What's he gonna say then? It shit just makes no damn sense to me, you know? that they keep on making the same fucking mistake. So it's like, what now? You know what I'm saying? It's all fucked up now. What do we do now? Like I said, people are gonna get tired of officers making these, mis these mistakes and shooting their children. And they gonna start taking shit into their own hands. I'm just saying. And one top, a couple top random topics I want to talk about also is the fact that people don't understand the difference between regular crime and police brutality. Like when someone gets killed in the street, we don't have to say all lives matter, black lives matter, stop Asian hate because the police officers are going to arrest them. People in the community are gonna call the cops and drop tips and they're gonna find whoever they're looking for. A cop kills somebody unarmed, unjustly, they get a paid vacation. There's the difference. Another thing during the whole Stop Asian Hate campaign, I didn't see not one person scream all lives matter during that. So what that tells me, the people who always scream all lives matter, you just don't give a fuck about black people. Plain and simple. Think about that. When they with having a commercial that says stop Asian hate, how come nobody says stop all hate? You didn't see black people that said, hey, stop black hate. I want y'all to think about that. Please do. Whew, I know, a lot to unpack. On the lighter side of things, one thing I've noticed, that people are born out of control right now. My cousin FaceTimed me a couple days ago. She said, Chuck, you come back to the hood, don't act like you ain't doing nothing you ain't supposed to do. Because you see everybody wearing Gucci and Louie going on trips. They're doing PPP loan scams. That's right. There's motherfuckers creating false businesses on paper. 
just to go to Tucson, no, not Tucson, Tuscaloosa or, 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 or whatever that shit is called, the new Cancun, the new spot in Mexico. Niggas going there, DR, Jamaica, everywhere, buying cars. Y'all niggas gonna go to jail. I'm just letting y'all know right now. And I am not bailing nobody out. I am not donating to your GoFundMe. None of that shit. One example. Last year, a Little Rock woman was arrested for scamming about $3 million in PPP loans. She is now sentenced to 41 months in prison. I had a friend of a friend try to get me to, to do one. He said, yeah, all you got to do is pay yourself a salary every week and you're good because like it's your business and you're paying yourself. I thought to myself, okay, are you just direct depositing your money from one account to another? Are you going through an actual payroll system like ADP? Were they showing taxes taken out? FICA? Social Security? Health? Dental? New York City tax? State tax? Federal tax? Are you dumb? What is really wrong with you motherfuckers? Because the government gonna come back and say, well, you lied on this form. Because on the form, it asks you if all these things are true. Did you guys go and make an LLC just to do this? Because there's actually a website out where you can go and see whoever received the PPP loan. This is fucking crazy. Ooh. You know what? I might post, I'm, I'm gonna post it in the description, in the episode description, this is crazy. You could type in, a zip, type in your, your neighborhood zip code and everyone in your neighborhood who received a PPP loan, their company or their name, whatever it was filed under, pops up. You can't get the money and then decide to flip houses. You have to have a business already. See what I'm saying? I just pray a lot of you didn't use your actual names and the person who did the paperwork for you that you paid to do didn't use your information. Because if you did, you're fucked. Talia. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the PPP loan is not money you can flip and pay back. No, you have to have a actual legit business first. Okay? Paying yourself a salary is not gonna work. I've seen a GoFundMe with some chick that says paying back my PPP loan. Oh my God. You motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. I'm gonna pray for y'all. I'm gonna pray for y'all niggas, man. I'm gonna pray for y'all niggas. And also, the season finale of Snowfall. I can't even wait till season five right now. It's crazy. So, where we last left off, Franklin's pops was snitching on everybody. He was on the motherfucking radio and said, yeah, I know his alias Reed Thompson and I know his real name. And if he don't fall back, I'm gonna let everybody know. Reed wasn't having that. Franklin went to go talk to his pops Alton. Long story short, Franklin turns around, Alton takes like a, a frying pan or something, busts him up beside his head, knocks him out, takes his pager, he get, and Alton gets in contact with Reed. He goes and meets up with him. Excuse me. Franklin's mom finally knocked out in the house. He said, oh, you was out there for like 30 minutes. He looks for his pager. He puts two and two together. Alton took it. Like I said, he went to call Reed. So boom, he tells his mom, yo, I gotta go. She's like, yo, I'm coming with you. It was like a three-person gun standoff. Reed, Alton, 
Franklin. Sissy gets, gets in the front of Alton. She's like, look, I have a passport from him, plane tickets, he'll get out of here. He'll go to Cuba, we'll be gone. So that was the plan. Franklin's mom and Alton, they go to Cuba. Reasons I'm gonna fall back for a minute, they're gonna bring somebody else in to take my place. Franklin's like, cool. So, episode before that, Louis was shot by um, Khadija's people during the drive-by. After Franklin and the team murdered Khadija, murdered Man Boy, Scully, well, he kind of like bled out and got arrested in the hospital when he came to kill Louis. And um, Uncle Jerome, they both talked him out of it or whatever. So when they came back to the club, they was like, yo, we want out the game. Well, not out the game. We want out away from you, Franklin. We'll buy work from you and do our own thing. Franklin was like, you think about it, I guess. He's also gonna go and let him go. Then he's talking to Leon. In a separate scene, Leon was like, yo, let him go. At the end of the day, it's less bread, but they'll respect you more because you let them leave. And if anything, they can always come back. Rick was like, since when you been the wise one? Leon is like, shit, I've always had, just never listen. Frank is like, true. Well, the project's gonna be more important to us now. Then Leon goes, yeah. I've been thinking since we're being real right now, I wanna fall back from all this shit. Then that's when Franklin had to remind this motherfucker that they got into the beef with Scully and Manboy because of him. That he pretty much paid off cops and other motherfuckers to get him out the jam. Bodies got dropped to get him out the jam and he said, oh, you still owe me, motherfucker. So you're gonna go on them projects and get this money for me. Straight like that. In a separate scene out in Cuba, Alton and Sissy, near a little beach house, he reading. I believe it was the spook by the door. The irony, right? Sissy's like, I'll be back, I'm going to the market. Switching that big old auntie booty of hers. A few minutes later, the door opens. Alton thinking that Sissy turn around. Is Reed fucking Thompson. AKA Teddy McDonald. I think his last name is McDonald. You know my reviews be all fucked up. I smoke too much, man. And that's it. We are gonna assume he killed him. We are gonna assume that. I wanna know if Sissy knew he was coming. Well, hold up. One last scene. Melanie, or Melody, whatever the fuck her name is. We'll call her Mel, Mel. She's in, uh, I think she's in Texas. This church, volunteering, whatever. Then guess who walks in? Franklin motherfucking Saint. Confronts her. For giving all that intel to that reporter. Who's now dead? By the way. Toe tagged and bagged her. Eh, shit happens. Keep your mouth shut, bitch. Um, he tells her like, yo. Stop playing with me. Before I really become a problem. Not in those words, but long story short. But the part that got crazy is when he put the cane to the side and walked out freely on his own. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> Bravo Snowfall. I loved it. I loved it. Oh. Beautiful cinematography. Beautiful. Oof. I'm gonna think if, I, if, I, if I'm forgetting anything. DMX's funeral. Derek Chauvin convicted. The young lady, Miss Bryant, murdered. You PPP loan scammers. Y'all niggas dumb. Um, <laughs> Snowfall of the classic. I have to watch episode two of 
The Godfather of Harlem. Make sure y'all check that out. Oh, speak of Harlem. I mean, Apollo Legend Guy Fisher shirt. Of course, it's on sale. You got the Apollo on this side. Legend on this side. Designed by my guy, TTK. Friend of the show. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, before I let go, the red and meth versus was fucking so dope and what we needed. Man, oh man. You talking about a gift on 420 besides Bud. Shit. They did all the hits. Brought out some Wu members. Brought out Death Squad, K Solo, EPMD, Keith Murray, Red Man on stage. Super dope, man. Super dope. But yo, I'm gonna get out of here. And like I always say, like, share, subscribe, comment. I am the Pope Chuck Paul. Peace out.